chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome, parishioners of St. Mary's, and those who are uh, watching this Mass through St. Mary's Ottawa YouTube channel. And uh, today, uh, we're on the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Okay? Uh, even though it's ordinary, it's always extraordinary when, when it comes in our relationship with the Lord, okay? Mm -hmm. So brothers and sisters, acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Take away the sins of 
Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and he lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come 
put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. an offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear, burnt offering and sin offering, you have not required, here I am, Lord, I come to do. scroll of the book it is written of me I delight to do your will oh my God your law is within my heart here I am Lord I come to do your will I have told the glad of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O oh Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise up us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But anyone united to the Lord becomes one with him in spirit. Shun fornication. Every, person that a, every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own. For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. O Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. If I were to ask you, what are the memorable events in your life? Okay, when, when we say memorable events, these are like ch life-changing moments that happen in our life. That's why it's memorable, right? It could be the day that you got married in church. Okay, I'm sure you could still remember, right? The groom looking so handsome, the bride looking so beautiful, and everyone celebrating the wedding, okay? Uh, or maybe the, the, the birth of your child, okay? You could still remember very well maybe the pain <laughs> of giving birth, but also at the same time, the joy when a child has been put into your arms and into your chest, okay? Or maybe the day when you graduated from university, right? You work so hard, and then you graduated, and you're celebrating with your friends, okay? Or, and some are not just positive, some are even negative, the things that happen in our life. It could be a memorable thing too, because it's life-changing. And one uh, negative thing that could happen in, in us is, was uh, a very good example is that, is that what happened in World Trade Center, right? In September 11, 2001. It changed, I could say, the whole world. That's why right now when you go to the airport, there's so many um, security. And it all started because of the attack on the World Trade Center. You see, it, was, it, it changed not just the lives of people, but the whole world. Okay? So we, we, these memorable events in our life, we have very vivid memory. And uh, as I said, we, we remember uh, the people that we're with. We could remember the emotion that we were experiencing, some positive, some negative, some joy, some, some are fear, whatever. And also, we could still also remember the day and the time that it happened. Okay? And uh, in, in our gospel today, two of the disciples of, uh, of John the Baptist also had this memorable event in their life. Okay? So what happened there in the gospel? Okay, John the Baptist saw Jesus walk by and John the Baptist said, look, here's the Lamb of God. And the two of the disciples heard, heard it, and they followed Jesus. And when they were following Jesus, Jesus turned and he saw them and he said to them, what are you looking for? And that question is also being asked to all of us. What are we looking for? Okay, and, and the two disciples said, Rabbi or teacher, where are you staying? Okay, where, are you, where do you live? Okay, and, uh, and Jesus did not say a lot. All he told them is that come and see. Come and see and discover it for yourself. And that's what they did. They 
they, they, they went with Jesus and they spent the whole day with Jesus. I could just imagine their conversation. You know, the, 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 the inspiration that they were experiencing when, when, when they heard P Jesus speaking to them. And they know that this is no ordinary man. <laughs> okay? And, uh, and, and, uh, and because of that, they said, you know, they remained with him and it was 4 p.m. They remembered the time. So two of the disciples, one of them is Andrew, and the other one was an unnamed disciple. But this, this, this gospel was written by John. And their scripture scholars were uh, assuming that this other unnamed disciple is John. So John wrote the time because it was a very memorable event. It was a life-transforming event in their life. That's why they were able to say 4 p.m. Okay? And, 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 and uh, so what happened there was that, you know, Andrew, after that was that Andrew first found his brother, and Peter, and said to him, you know, within a very exciting uh, emotion there, he's like, we have found the Messiah. You know, not, not like in, uh, when we say, it, we have found the Messiah. No. There's great emotion there. We have found the Messiah. Okay? And uh, I'm sure Peter, you know, in his reaction would say, uh, who, who is that you're talking about? Oh, a man from Nazareth. And then maybe Peter would say, is there anything good that could come out of Nazareth? <laughs> and I could assume P Andrew telling his brother Peter, come and see. You discover it for yourself. And Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. And there, Peter encountered Jesus in a very personal way. And that totally transformed his life. And it, it, it said in the gospel, right? When Jesus encountered Peter, Peter, Jesus said to Peter, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The change of the name from Simon to Peter was a life-transforming moment for Peter. And that would never happen if not for his brother, Andrew. Okay? Now, who is, who is Andrew? Okay? Who is Andrew? Uh, because it's... Yeah, we, Andrew is a profile of a personal evangelist. And I would like to say something about Andrew, hopefully, that would encourage us to be like him. Okay? So, first of all, Andrew was the first called, okay, together with John. They were the first who were called by Jesus. And, uh, and, and sometimes for us, uh, for me, you know, uh, sometimes we, we feel unimportant because we are not able to do big things that others do, okay? But we need to remember that big thing does not make us big in the eyes of God. I remember Mother Teresa once said, God does not call us to be successful. He calls us to be faithful, especially in the small things, in the little things. Just be faithful. And when we do that, we're big in the eyes of God, okay? And so Andrew, so Andrew, what could we learn from Andrew? Andrew was just an ordinary man. He never wrote a book that we know of. There's no such a thing as Gospel of Andrew, okay? He never wrote a thing, okay? And also, he was not in the forefront like the big tree. Who's the big tree? Peter James and John. These three are in the forefront. Andrew was part of the, those who are in the background. Okay? But what is the most notable asset of Andrew? What is most most notable asset? And his notable asset is that simply, he's simply introducing others to Jesus. Okay? And that's what he did. He brought his brother Peter to Jesus. 
in John, in the Gospel of John chapter 6, when Jesus was with the, uh, a lot of people in the desert and they were going hungry, okay, and Jesus asked for food for, for these people. And it was Andrew who brought the boy who has five loaves and two fish to Jesus. And because of that, Jesus was able to multiply the five loaves and two fish and fed the 5,000 people. See? That's his, his, his most notable asset, is bringing, Jesus, bringing people to an encounter with Jesus. The second characteristic of, of Andrew is that he was a man of zeal, a man of great passion, a man of great desire, a man whose heart is on fire, okay? And because his first desire was to find his brother Peter and bring him to Jesus, okay? He could not contain it to himself, this good news, okay? He could not contain it to himself and not tell others about this great message that he has found the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, okay? The another uh, uh, characteristic of, of, of Andrew is that he was a man of great faith, okay? And because he was so convinced, he was so convinced that he had found the Messiah, okay? and that implies that he had this open mind to really search for the Messiah, okay? And, uh, and also his great desire to know more about Jesus, you know, by, by spending time with Jesus that day. He was also a man of outstanding humility, okay? Peter is far better known than was Andrew, okay? When Jesus asked the disciples, who do, you, who do people say that I am? It was Peter who made that profession, you are the son of God. You are the Christ, okay? Peter was also with the big tree, again, the big tree, Peter, James, and John, and they were with Jesus in the transfiguration. When they saw P uh, Jesus transfigured on Mount Tabor. Also, Peter's first sermon was written on Acts, in the book of Acts, chapter 2. So you see here how Peter was more known. He, Peter became more popular than Andrew. Okay? But, Andrew, but what, one good thing about Andrew is because of his great humility is that he accepted what he could do and could not do in the service to the Lord. Okay? Also, he was able to accept the plan that God had for him. Okay? So, four, four very good characteristic of, 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 of Andrew that we can imitate so that we also would become a personal evangelist like Andrew. And that's what we're trying to do here at St. Mary's. We're doing this Operation Hearts on Fire. And there are three pillars under the Operation Hearts on Fire. Catch the fire, the first pillar. We need to catch the fire. And when we catch the fire, we need to enkindle it so that it will continue to burn. And then the third pillar is that we need to share the fire. And that's what Andrew did. He caught the fire and kindled that fire and shared that fire with his brother Peter. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to share the fire by bringing people to an encounter with the Lord who is the source of that fire. And the source of that fire is the sacred heart burning with his love for each and every one of us. Okay? And uh, under that share the fire is that we need to evangelize people by our, 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 our words, by our actions, okay? But some, some people, they're intimidated to, to share the good news to others. And that's okay, okay? If you're intimidated, if you're not ready, it's okay. If you can't carry yet the message to the people, 
I think all of us could carry the people to the message. By inviting people, you know, to um, evangelization program like Alpha. Okay? Now, what is Alpha? Okay, I'm going to focus on Alpha. There's sev several evangelization tools that we could use. But what is Alpha? Alpha is being used by uh, Catholic parishes and also other Christian denominations as an effective tool for evangelization because it introduced people to the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. In 2018, the, looking at the Alpha website, it described that its course as running in over 100 countries and translated over 100 languages with over 24 million people having taken the course. And in particular, this is attracting many young people, okay, who are asking the question, is there more to life than this? Okay, especially right now, we're experiencing COVID-19. People are asking that question, is there more to life than this? Okay. And uh, uh, there's, there's a, um, a British adventurer, writer, television presenter, and businessman. His name is Bear Grylls. How many of you are familiar with Bear Grylls? Familiar with that? Bear Grylls? Or familiar with that? Okay. Uh, so he became widely known for his television series, Man vs. Wild. Okay. It came out in 2006 uh, until 2011. And he's also right now on Netflix. It came out, uh, his television series is called You vs. Wild. And it's on Netflix. You could watch it. And uh, I, I watched some of his videos. He said, I want to be like him because I like adventure too. <laughs> Maybe I could go uh, uh, and have my own TV series on Netflix and you could watch me there. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bear Grylls underwent a conversion through Alpha. Despite all the adventure videos that he made, he's saying that his greatest adventure is to follow Jesus. Okay, so you could watch his testimony of, uh, of um, he, uh, going through Alpha, go to try alpha.ca okay so bear grills and uh so i would just like to share with you a testimony of not of a conversion not of one individual but of a family as they as they as because uh people have invited me, them to undergo to take alpha it brought transformation it deepened their faith it brought them to conversion not just for one individual but for one family so uh Let's take a moment to uh, watch this testimony of this wonderful family, a parishioner here at St. Mary's. I am Jermaine Punyang. I'm Derek Punyang. And I'm Celise Punyang. And we've, and all, we've attended all attended Alpha. Alpha. There was a need within me to be more involved, to do something to strengthen my spirituality. I saw this huge banner outside St. Mary's advertising Alpha, and it caught my eye because I had never seen something so boldly advertised in a church before. At that same time, I'd been talking to a friend at the parish who had attended Alpha, and she encouraged me to do it. I learned that I have a place in this life. My life is purposeful, and Alpha also helped me feel okay with myself and who I am. I love the sharing, the community, the fact that we got to experience this with the same people every week. And I honestly felt that we were purposefully put together by God's hand. And as a result, I joined a small community. Also, I got much better acquainted with a few people from church that I was not close to before. Alpha has helped me to better appreciate my faith and church life and has taught me the importance of community and to rely on each other. Uh, my participation in Alpha was epiphanous. Uh, my experience was a reaffirmation of my beliefs and religious convictions. It included the fact that spiritual maturity comes in increments. 
and that we are guided by that invisible hand of God throughout the maturation process. The change that I experienced during Alpha was that of serenity, of allowing God, uh, his divine workings, and my own unconditional surrender to supplant any preconceived notions I may have had about some immediate discovery or some dramatic transformation. In other words, just letting things be. The serenity and clarity that I experienced were incalculable. I view life and my daily personal interaction as one of grace, of fulfilling God's divine plan for me and in approaching challenges with a, you know, a sense of bliss. Alpha awakened in me the value of surrender of many things material and to focus on uplifting relationships. In my case, my closest friend had expressed to me that she was longing to get involved in a church community. Um, at the same time, my father was just finishing his last session at Alpha and recommended it to me. I told my friend about Alpha and we decided to attend together. Growing up in the church, I found my faith strong, but because of the familiarity, at times I was not really moved by it. Um, I realized that there were plenty of simple and compelling arguments for Christianity that I had never once considered. Also, the testimonies of the various speakers in the videos were profoundly moving. All of this gave me more perspective on my faith, and the easy conversation, company, and the discussion of deeper topics among my friends was really fulfilling to me. Alpha has had a big effect on me in two ways. Firstly, I retained so much of the basic information about Christianity that was taught in the first few videos. Second, it let me get to know more people in my parish, have relationships with other Christians, and gave us the opportunity to openly pray for one another. Alpha has strengthened my faith and has given me a better awareness of the importance of relationships in my life. So I hope you were inspired by the testimony of this uh, wonderful family who underwent a transformation, a conver conver uh, conversion by going through Alpha. So I would really like to invite you to join us here at St. Mary's. We're, go, we're, we're, we're gonna do this uh, uh, online alpha starting on uh, January 27th, it's a Wednesday. It's from 7 to 9 p.m., okay? Uh, and uh, here you could see that there's a QR code. QR stands for quick response code. Take out your smartphone, pause this video, and um, uh, what's this, uh, take a camera, take a picture, I scan it through your camera, and then it will lead you to the, to the website where you could register. Now, just like what Jesus said to the two disciples, that is also my invitation to you. Just come even for that one night, January 27, 7 to 9 p.m. Just do a come and see. Okay? You need to discover Jesus for who he is. Okay? and to encounter him in a very personal way. So, one of my favorite uh, passage is uh, uh, from Romans chapter 10, verse 15. It says there, how beautiful, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news to others. And you could change beautiful to blessed, how happy. You know, because for me, my greatest desire my greatest happiness right now is to see people undergo conversion when they encounter the Lord. It's like, it's like a dying plant, like suddenly come back to life. It's so beautiful. And I don't want you to miss out on that. So let's, 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 imitate, let's imitate Andrew. Let, 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 let us become a personal evangelist. By doing, by, by, by doing very well, just by introducing people to Jesus, by bringing, by bringing them to an encounter with the Lord, okay? And what happened there is that bringing someone to Jesus can lead to a million saved souls. I don't know if you, remember, if you, if you believe in that. Just look at the example of Andrew. Andrew brought Peter to Jesus, and only in heaven will we know how many souls were saved through the ministry of Peter.
Let us now stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. So in the power of the Holy Spirit who dwells in our hearts, let us present our needs to God in these petitions. For the health and safety of Pope Francis, Archbishop Marcel Dampus, and all the shepherds of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father's intention this month, may the Lord give us the grace to live in full fellowship with our brothers and sisters of other religions, praying for one another open to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Catholics will recognize their responsibility to discover their vocation in Christ and follow him, especially those chosen for the priesthood, diaconate, or consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the well-being of our nation, our premier, and for the safety of all those who serve and protect us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those who care for them, and for all those who have died from the cor coronavirus, and our friends and family members who have gone before us, especially Modesta Teresa de Souza and Gail Ann Staten. Grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those needs placed in our parish intention baskets and on our Prayer Connection website, and for our special intention for this Mass, the parishioners of St. Mary's. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be present to us, Lord our God, as you were to Samuel. Reveal your Son, the Messiah, to us as you revealed him to Andrew and Peter. Show us your love in answer to our prayers so that we may glorify you in all things. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, may sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise the glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in this mysteries. For whenever is the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, O Lord, as you celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in, a, in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Andrew, St. Peter, and with all the saints who in this constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope Mar and Marcel our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace the grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away the 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let's just take a moment of silence right now and, and you know, we just receive Jesus and, and ask Jesus right now, Lord, who do you want me to bring so that this person could have an encounter with you? Who could be our Peter that we could bring to you right now? Lord, give me courage. Lord, cast away any fear, fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of what people would think about me. Lord, cast away all fear. Lord, grant me the zeal, the passion, the desire to carry the message of hope, to carry the good news to others about you. For you are our Lord, you are our Savior, you are our Messiah. We want others to experience what we are experiencing right now in our relationship with you. So Lord, reveal to us now, who do you want us to bring to you? Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So please be seated for some announcement. Okay. So first of all, please accept our apologies as this project, uh, St. Mary's Got Talent, has taken longer than anticipated to get it up and running. Okay, so I'm here to inform you that the St. Mary's website will be up and running this coming Monday for St. Mary's Got Talent. So, you know, I'm excited of this uh, initiative that we're doing here. Uh, so now we will watch the intro video introducing this great, fun, filled initiative. My name is Carol Clermont, and for those of you who don't know me, I've been a parishioner at St. Mary's for over 20 years now, and I'm here to tell you about a new, exciting, fun-filled initiative that we are launching here at St. Mary's called St. Mary's Got Talent. For the foreseeable future, this ongoing initiative will provide parishioners with an opportunity to stay connected, and to get to know each other better in the comfort of our own homes. We are inviting young and older parishioners to create a two to four minute video, that's right, a video, to share, either share about your talents that you may have, or share something about yourself, your family, or your group. It could be about a hobby or an artistic ability that you have, sharing a word of wisdom, or a kindness or a blessing that you have experienced. Something that you would like to teach others how to do. It could be your positive experience in ministry or community, perhaps your conversion story. There are so many other things you can share about. We invite you to come up with your own idea. We hope that you will agree that in these challenging times, now more than ever, it is so important that we stay connected on a regular basis, as this can give us a better sense of community. Let's praise and thank God for all the talents and the wonderful people that are part of the St. Mary's family. Let's put some names to faces and get to know each other better. For more information on this project and how to submit your video, please consult the St. Mary's weekly newsletter or visit the St. Mary's website under St. Mary's Got Talent. May God bless you, and we hope to see you soon on the St. Mary's YouTube channel. So more information can be found 
as of Monday on the St. Mary's website and on the St. Mary's YouTube channel under St. Mary's Got Talent. So we are excited. I'm really excited about this project. And uh, you will see me there, you know, showing, showcasing my talent. <laughs> so I hope you also contribute your talent, OK? Uh, and look forward to receiving your videos. So I look forward to, we, we look forward to receiving your videos and seeing all of you on the St. Mary's YouTube channel, OK? And uh, other announcement. Uh, so register parishioners who feel a particular serious need to attend a mass during the time of lockdown are asked to please contact the parish office. Okay, so don't just come here because uh, you need to register yourself. Okay, we're limiting it to 10 people. Uh, also for, uh, so join, uh, consider joining a young adult small group faith study. For parishioners between 18 and 25 years of age, the Discovery Faith Study will lead you through a personal changing look at the gospel. Discovery explores God's personal love for you and the role of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior before inviting you personally to respond to Jesus' love. So through meaningful conversation and thought-provoking questions, you will take a deeper look at the core of your faith and explore what it means to live a Christ-centered life. If you don't know Jesus or want to know him better, this is the faith study for you. So it begins on January 20th, 2021. So please contact the parish office for more details. I've heard also of many uh, testimonies of people who encountered the Lord through this uh, uh, Discovery Faith Studies. Okay, so uh, I really encourage you to, to join uh, for those who are between 18 to 25. I couldn't no longer chain. I'm 26 right now, so. <laughs> Just kidding. St. Mary's Parish will be offering an online marriage preparation course on Wednesday evenings starting January 27 uh, seven, for seven weeks, okay? So the registration deadline is January 28th. So for more information and registration, please contact Howie and Veronique for at marriage preparation at St. Mary's Ottawa.ca. So as we worship, see the Lord minister to his people in power. Join us online for an evening of praise, prophecy, teaching, and healing on January 22nd, 2021 from 7 to 9 p.m. So the team is Catch the Fire, so one of the pillars of the Operation Hearts on Fire. The speaker is uh, Father Francis Donnelly, uh, a companion of the Cross Priest. He's also chaplain and member of the leadership team for Encounter School of Ministry. We have now the Encounter School of Ministry here in Ottawa, okay? So there's an Ottawa satellite campus. Uh, uh, so for more information, please contact Natalia Lacar at uh, 613-728-9811, uh, extension 720, or night dot worship dot ministry at St. Mary's Ottawa dot CA. So we continue doing our also our online Eucharistic adoration on Thursday uh, from 8 to 9 p.m. So this January uh, 21st, um, I invite you to attend the online Eucharistic adoration. I've been hearing a lot of good feedback about it, hearts being touched, healing, um, conf uh, prophetic messages being confirmed. So uh, I invite you to attend. That's from 8 to 9 p.m. Uh, this coming Thursday. Also, the Sacrament of Confirmation preparation will begin in this year. If your child is currently in grade 6 or older, they are eligible to participate. So please email confirmation at stmarysottawa.ca by January 31st. Okay? So I guess that's all the announcement. Uh, it's, it's already long. So please stand. So uh, please pray for us here in Ottawa. We're experiencing a, a snowstorm here. I think we have like 15 to 20 centimeters of snow already. Uh, uh, so please be safe, those who are driving uh, on the road. Okay. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and that our Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. There were walls between us By the cross you came and broke them down You broke them down There were chains around us By your grace we are no longer bound No longer bound You called me out of the grave You called me into the light You called my name and then my heart came your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Feel the dark is shaking all the dead are coming back to life i'm back to life hear the song awaken all creation singing we're alive because you're alive you call me out of the grave you call me into the light you call my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens.